I love it in Acts, I think it's 17, where, you know, Paul says to the, um, to the pagans in Athens, in him we live and move and have our being. And I think that verse really, really touched my heart at one point where I, I really didn't know Christ was in everybody because I was taught you had to receive Jesus into your heart. You have to like believe really, you know, really believe and like, and like how much belief is enough belief, you know? And so then I was like, you're striving to believe, you know, for a while. And then yeah. the only thing that really helped me get out of that was an encounter. And I, not everyone has encounters, but I, I think I needed it. <laughs> And just revealing his presence and the just perfect peace. Um, yes, yeah, understanding. That's yeah. beautiful. I love that. I think God meets us wherever we are and whatever our background is. I think yeah. he he knows us so well. He knows where to show up. He also knows who has hard hearts and they're pushing them away. You know, and we can just hope and pray that at some point, whatever that heart wound that they have gets healed and then they see you know the truth and the light yeah yeah you, you would like um you would like my friend uh that i i just chatted with her today lila um i have her book somewhere lila um cook she wrote this book it's called from ashes to beauty recovering from trauma through the spirit it's a devotional and what I love about this is every chapter is so, it's so short and sweet. It's just a little Bible verse. And then she talks about her life for like a couple paragraphs. And then she has a prayer and then a song. And then there's a new chapter. It just, it's different. I like that. Let's see it again. Cause I'll, I'll see if she wants to be on my show. Oh, sure. Yeah. Lila Cook. Lila Cook. I love it. I love it. I'm just finishing this one. In fact, you can see all the things I need to change. Oh, this is the um, author proof. Never settle. Who, who's yeah. it? Who wrote that? You? No, this, no, no. This is a client. Um, her name's Mindy Sanquist. Sanquist oh. And she and I are in the John Maxwell team together. Okay. Um, she joined one of my, um, I did an online challenge, which led to a group coaching. Hi, I see you. No, <laughs> I see this little hand. Um, she did a group coaching, a book writing set thing, a uh, program that I mm -hmm. did in 2021. Oh, wow. And she stepped back uh, through that time. Well, it was the end of 2021. So it was two and a half years ago. Wow. And she had a lot of setbacks, but it's done. Yes, it is finished. And we're going to launch it on Good Friday because her husband yeah. was a pastor. And they, um, his last sermon was on Sunday, um, Easter Sunday. In fact, there's a picture of it in here where all of the congregation held up as he was, I don't think you can even see it, but mm -hmm. all of these, can you see that okay? Yeah. All the people are holding up a sign that says never settle. <laughs> ah, oh, cool. He, he was so sick that they didn't even think they could get him to stand up. And yet he was on, on spirit power <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, and he delivered a powerful message. So this book is about um, his journey and he and his wife were pastors or he was the pastor, she was supporting him and he had gotten diagnosed with cancer, but he had a calling to start a church and his whole journey was cancer and growing a church oh. and it's really precious she's a, an amazing person oh i love her to death she lives in florida oh yeah i love that I'm, I'm gonna check out that book for sure and i saw you had a little um video clip of yourself talking about oh. it i think on facebook we were unveiling it well, um, unveiling it. I, yeah i clicked on that i watched a little bit of that so oh yeah. thanks yeah yeah we're excited about it. We're gonna um, launch it on Good Friday. Yeah. And um, she is so excited. She's so excited, and I'm so excited for her. Is that her first book, or? Yeah, it's her first yeah. book. First, okay. yeah, her first one. She wants to do another one after this, but this one is her first. Mm. So, what is your book about? 
Oh well, I have Rainbow Rainbow Wings, but it's already public. It's already out. Um, I don't no, have cool. a copy of it right now, but in your car. yeah, it's in my car. <laughs> okay. Oh, Rainbow Wings. But yeah, I wrote it for my daughter actually, and then um, after a while, we decided we were gonna put it on <laughs> um, Amazon because you can publish on Amazon. So. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I do yeah. all bestsellers. Every book that we <laughs> work with me, we make it a bestseller. Yeah. You see Face. Yeah, I read it to her. What is the book about? Tell me what the book is about. She's nine, and uh, but I wrote it when she was younger to help her fall asleep. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a good idea. It's almost we, like an uh, ugly duckling story. Like the you know this turns into a beautiful swan. It's sort of like that premise, but uh, it's what makes it different. Um, she has a little <laughs> friend. This dragonfly has a little friend, a ladybug, and the ladybug tells her the truth about who she is. Like she was believing lies about herself that she couldn't couldn't uh, fly like the other, she wasn't pretty and beautiful. And so yeah. when she started believing in herself, she was able to fly up high. And she noticed her beautiful rainbow wings reflecting in the water. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Sounds yeah. amazing. So it's just a cute one. And then I also have uh, Fearless Expressions, which is my poetry which um goes from real dark poetry because i had um you know a traumatic background um addiction and recovery and just all sorts of stuff so i talk about something that you're it's glad you're beyond that that's yeah, amazing dark stuff right away on you know in the beginning of the few, first few chapters and then it gets lighter wow. and then you know i talk about my i talk about god and you know his saving it. grace and in poetry form. I so, love it. Yeah. I think that's wonderful. But I mostly I, don't write that much anymore. I just um, like to chat with people and, and yeah. work at a school right now. I'm working as a um, paraprofessional. So I work what with is a with paraprofessional. Them. Yeah. What yeah. is a paraprofessional? Oh, you work with a teacher is. in her class. You work with a teacher in their classroom and you uh -huh. work children that have um, either emotional disability or autism or ADHD oh, or combination. <laughs> oh, that sounds wonderful and very rewarding. Yeah. So that's a little bit about great. me. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't, why don't you share with us, like, um, you know, this is your platform to share, you know, share your heart and um, just like your mission, what, what God's have you, what God is leading you to do right now. And, your calling. Yeah. Uh, Everything. Yeah. Well, I worked for the Department of Corrections. And as you can imagine, working in a prison, I worked in nine different ones and also with some reentry projects. Um, that's a hard job. Wow. <laughs> and it's a really negative environment. But I really do believe, in fact, somebody even deemed me the officer of sunshine at one point uh -huh. <laughs> because I really do believe I brought some light to the the um dark places mm. but when i retired from that i joined a, an organization called the john maxwell team it's now known as maxwell leadership and john had been my pastor many many years ago and when he really wasn't uh the name that he is today and i have you heard of him by chance no no and it's okay that you haven't but most people in leadership positions of any sort church leaders, uh, presidents of countries, the Pope, <laughs> many people have um, solicited him for advice or different kinds of leadership information. We travel to other countries to do transformational roundtables, mm -hmm. and it is just a very special organization. It is not faith-based. Mm -hmm. um, John's platform um, he really believes that if he gets you in his circle, that you will eventually accept Jesus as your savior. <laughs> That's just the way it is. But he loves everyone. And I've modeled faith based, huh? So what is no. it? So what is it? Like, what is it? <laughs> it's leadership. Oh, we okay. are a team of coaches, speakers, ah, coach. and trainers. Oh. And we we use his um, materials to teach people. Oh, okay. All, everything he has ever written is biblically based, but he has written it for a secular world for the most part. Some of his books actually are faith-based. Most are not. Mm -hmm. And um, he he talks in Fortune 500 companies, mm -hmm. C-suite, 
you know, it, it he's a big deal. Wow. He's a big deal. Yeah. Most of his audiences are like 30, 40, 50,000 people. It's, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I've gotten to travel with him and it's, a, it's just a blast. Well, so I have this dark world and then I joined the Maxwell leadership team and I actually joined to be a speaker because mm -hmm. I, I like you, I've had challenges in my life. Um, addiction hasn't been one of them, but I've had a lot of loss. I was molested as a child I think that puts you on a trajectory that's different than people who have not and it's really common with women so I really believe in healing and finding heart wounds and letting Jesus get in there and heal them there's some great uh, methods of doing that mm -hmm. but anyway so my childhood was beautiful in every every way my parents were wonderful parents Everything was perfect except that. <laughs> yeah. wow. Well, and then there is my mom suffered from some mental health issues. So that got a little wonky at times. But for the most part, I had a very happy childhood. Didn't realize the impact of this dark part of me. Um, got married to somebody who had mental health issues. And we had two children. And I lost one of them in a car accident when she was 16. Right. So that kind of put me in a whole new world yeah. uh, that I was not familiar with. And I, I never lost my faith, but it shook the foundation. <laughs> I really started questioning everything. And I, yeah, I sort of feel, or I've said many times that my faith was sort of in a cute little box with a bow on it before my daughter died. I, I had it figured out and I figured you know this is it you know this is how I believe this is what I believe this is it and it was all right there in the box but when Jenna died it was like the box blew open because I questioned everything that I thought I knew and thought I believed and I read the Bible differently with different eyes things opened up in a different way for me I I think when you get really raw emotionally that's when God can really do his best work in your heart and in your soul your mind so a few years after that we lost everything in the California cedar fire between those two things I divorced my first husband and remarried and then we lost all of our belongings in the California cedar fire and I really thought you know what on earth you know how how can all these bad things happen <laughs> and I remember this book from years ago called Why Do Bad Things Happen to Good People? I think it was Robert Schuler that wrote that book. I might be wrong on the on the person who write, wrote it. But people started saying, why is all this stuff happening to you? And I said, I don't know. Um, but by then, I already had started to heal from the loss of Jenna and um, started to uh kind of find a way out of the darkness if you will and god had been working with me the whole time like i said i never lost my faith i just had a lot of conversations <laughs> with the god about it yeah. um and so those those events sort of molded who i am and so when i retired i wanted to join the john maxwell team i had known that there was one because i was on the launch call when they first started it and i hadn't had time when i was working um to really focus on that so i thought well i'll, I'll do it when i retire which is what i did and i joined to be a speaker and i quickly fell in love with coaching <laughs> So I got sidetracked learning how to be a good coach and I started coaching people and it was great. I loved it, but it kind of felt like I got off my mission. Yeah. And uh, so I started looking at that again and people that are speakers usually have a book, at least one. Yeah. And I thought, man, I really need to get that book done. And many years prior at church, our um, pastor had walked in one morning and I, on the way to church, was like, oh, my, and I used to say this all the time, <laughs> I should write a book because no one would believe my life. And I really thought it would be all the, the crazy, wacky things that happen in a day, you know, that you could just laugh about it and, and then tell a good um, moral of the story kind of book. 
that's what I envisioned writing back then. That, at that same time, I had just said I should write a book because my husband was doing something wacky. And I was like, oh, Calgon, take me away. I should write a book. Nobody had believed my life. <laughs> and uh, on, <laughs> we're sitting in Sunday school with about 200 people. So it was a pretty big room. And our pastor walked in and said, you know, I've never had this happen before, but whoever keeps saying they need to write a book needs to write the book. You know, <laughs> I feel like God's telling me you you should do it. And so my husband elbowed me and she's, he's like, you just said that, you Get know, on it. Get on it. <laughs> I know. so that started this quest. But back in those days, um, there was no Amazon. It wasn't easy to write a book. It wasn't even easy to figure out how to write a book. There were only a few big publishers and they didn't look at people like me. So um, I kept trying and all of that and failed many, many times. Well, I never really failed. I just didn't know how to do it. I would write and I wouldn't know what to do. And then that computer with all of those writings on it burned in that fire. Oh, so I always a lot my, of starting overs, huh? Yes. You're an expert in starting over. <laughs> there you go. I am an expert at that. Well, I don't want to start over a whole lot more in my life. No, but, I know. But if God brings it, I can survive. I That's whatever it is. A positive I, twist. <laughs> I feel like I can. I I feel like I've come out, you know, the better yeah. in many ways. So that's when I um so I had that message like 35 years ago. And then when I retired and wanted to speak and did the coaching and then all of a sudden I was like, I have to write this book first. So my first book I wrote, but it really didn't tie into what I talk about which is hilarious when I think about it now. I really just didn't know how to make a business out of speaking and books and all of that. So I had to start kind of figuring those pieces out. And I am an entrepreneurial kind of person. I've owned some multi-million dollar businesses. So it's not like that's not foreign to me. Before I worked for the prison system, I had some big businesses. And so <laughs> I thought, well, I need to figure this thing out and do this better. So all of a sudden, when my book was done, people were coming to me to ask me if I could help them write theirs. So that's what I started doing. And I, I really felt, in fact, as people were asking me, I was like, are you kidding me? I wouldn't ask me how to write a book. I, you know, what do I know? I paid a publisher $8,000 to get my first book done. And then I found out it wasn't even a publisher. It was, you know, one of the hybrid type um, people that um say they're a pu you know I call myself a publisher and I am a publisher I own a company and it is a publishing company but there's also people who say they're publishers who are advocates for um for self-publishing uh -huh. and so I do both and I am very clear what I do and how I do it and why I'm a good person for somebody to work with but Back then, people were coming to me and I was like, yeah, I don't think you want me to help you. But then in my prayer time, God was like, that's what I want you to do. And I kept thinking, you've got this wrong. You know, I think you're you're that's, you're getting in the wrong people's brain. <laughs> this is how not... it usually starts, though, with the vision you know, and then you try to do it in your own striving. And then it, I mean, that, that's happened for me anyway. Like, yeah, so I think so many it's times they tell me to do something and then. I go ahead and do it in this way and I'm supposed to do it, you know, like, I don't know. It yeah. Just, no, it, it, it's how we all evolve. I think it's, yeah, this it is the process. A, yeah. I think there's a common thread in, in the human experience, um, whether you're a person of faith or not, I think, I think there's a common thread, but the thing that's different with the person of faith is that they have that connection and it's either you listen or you don't. And so I fought it for a while. And then all of a sudden I got to thinking, if this is what you want me to do, I'm going to try one, just one book for somebody else and see if I can do it. By then I had already published a second book and I knew a little bit more about the process more than from a client point of view. I learned more of how to create a book, how to do all of the different 
parts of it, SEO um, description. I, I learned so much more. So after the second one, I did a third one very quickly. And it's actually the third book that I wrote that makes has made me thousands of dollars, <laughs> which is hilarious. So by it, third time's a charm, right? Mm -hmm. But I started helping other people. Um, and I was a little insecure with my knowledge. And so I would let them know, you know, it's funny because you said, well, I, I help people publish books, but maybe I'm not the best at it, I think you said, but you know what, you're doing it. That's what's important. You're helping people. And I'm I- A bridge, I'm a bridge. I'll leave people yeah. I love to make connections. And Yes, all of that is a beautiful, those are beautiful parts. I don't, I don't really believe in, a lot of people believe in competition and oh. my gosh, you know, don't, I don't want to talk to other people that are publishers or people that help people write books. No, I have a really specific niche. Mm -hmm. And I know that the people that come to me are the ones that God wants me to work with. Mm -hmm. And if I feel that strongly, I say yes. And if I don't, I am not too interested. <laughs> so that's just how I operate. But I've been grateful that all of the books I've helped people with, we've been able to do a bestseller campaign and make them a bestseller, which is fun. And it's very rewarding for me. And it's also a beautiful thing to see how um, the people that have worked with me, it's a journey, as you well know. Mm -hmm. it, it can be very cathartic to go back and look at your life and find the meaning in it and see where you overcame things and then help other people with your story. That's like with your book, with your um, poetry book, you know, you take them on a journey from the, where it was dark and then where it got light. <laughs> so that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And I, that we have to do more of that. <laughs> do you have like little groups that you run like on Zoom where you can talk to each other about the process? Well, what I did um, back in 2021 is I did a challenge and the offer in the challenge was a group coaching where for, it was a 90, in fact, the, the tagline was get your book done in 2021. And we had about four months of the year. And so I was going to lead people through to get their book done in 2021. Well, out of that, I had 20 people sign up one, um, she was, after about two weeks, she realized that her mom was very sick and needed her attention. So she did not get her book done. And I had two teachers that started and they still want to get their books done, but they realized it was a little too much. Mm -hmm. And so they didn't. And everybody else got their book done. Um, only one got her book done in 2021. <laughs> And so my promise to them was, I I think I promised that even if you don't get it done in 2021, we'll st still get it done. And she was my last one to get done. So, <laughs> so we worked together and she decided to convert to a one-to-one -one client mm -hmm. because she really felt like she needed um, more personal attention. Mm -hmm. And that was fine too. So I, I decided just recently that um, I wanna do that again. So I'm gonna have an ongoing membership to help people get through the program. Mm -hmm. I have some videos in a Facebook group right now, but I'm gonna refresh all of those because I have so much more information and newer information than what I did back in 2021. I mean, things have changed. So, and I've changed, I've learned more, you know, I, I would, like if I wrote my first book again, it would be like almost a different book. Yeah. Um, but I, that book has served me well and it did what I wanted it to do. It did go number one best selling in eight countries. Oh, wow. And yeah. What book is that? that? I'll look it up. <laughs> right? You didn't well, say the title. What's the title? It's called Create Butterfly Moments, Become the Person You Were Meant to Be. Okay. And I give it to a lot of kids mostly. I wrote it for my own grandkids because I sort of joke about it, but I thought if Grammy ever gets hit by a bus, they're gonna know what made me tick. Mm -hmm. So 
that's kind of my tongue in cheek thing that I say about it. But the truth is, I my one of my grandmothers, I didn't know at all because she passed away before I was born. And the other grandmother died when I was 12. So I really I knew her some. I have great memories of her, but I didn't really know all her life or what was important to her or anything. I think like if they had written something, I would have had that. And so I thought, well, I don't want to leave my grandkids and their grandkids without anything. Yeah. So that was my motivation. And I wanted to honor my daughter's memory. Yeah. Becomes so beautiful. she's the picture on the front. It, I had that. Um, yeah, she's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks. She um, she was a beautiful person. You would have loved her. She would go do reenactments at the mall to lead kids to Christ. You know, she was like a go-getter. Um, and and every like thought, close to my age too, because she was born in 81. I was born in 80. So were you? Oh, so yeah. Yeah. She, um, she was only 16 when she died. She died in a car accident. Mm -hmm. And that was, uh, like I say, life changing. Yeah. But I think I'm a better person today as a result of, um, I mean, I think I was a good person before, but I, I think I am somebody that does stop and take note of things and be, I'm compassionate. Mm -hmm. I, like I say, I was all of those things before, mm -hmm. but it just made me think differently about things. You strike me as a person who would be very um, compassionate and appreciative of like the little things. Yeah. Yeah. I am. Yeah. I would say I am. I think before I just rushed through life, yeah. like a lot of people do it, especially at that stage of life, yeah. had the two teenage daughters and church and work and a husband that I never knew exactly which person I was going to have. Um, sometimes he was wonderful to get along with and other times not so much. So I um, had this kind of I mean, kind of <laughs> my viva loca, you know, I just felt like I had this crazy life and um, I approached it with humor. That's, <laughs> I that's, that's hard as a Christian too, because you get so much, if they're not doing it directly, like I know I was in a church where there's a lot of judgment on that. If, you know, cause they'll, they'll assess you by your fruit. <laughs> right? it, you know, you have five kids and a beautiful life and you're always posting positive things on Facebook. Oh, wow, you must be perfect. <laughs> Right? I and know. It's a mask. It is. And people oh, is. don't. That's what I want more in the church is I want people to be feeling free and confident to share what they're really going through and without yeah. reservation or fear of judgment, you know? Right. I've kind of gotten to the place in life where for the most part, I don't care if people judge me. <laughs> you know, I am what I am. I am who you see and I think I've always been that way but more so as I've gotten older I think there is still a little bit of vanity in me I recently had um I had to go to the dermatologist and I had a couple I've had skin cancer on my face and I thought ooh, I don't want any more of that so I went to this dermatologist and um he said well and I've never had him do this before, but he said, there are a few places that we can take care of those today. And I went, okay, why not? I don't know what I was saying yes to. Well, the next day and the next day, I had red things and blisters and stuff all over my face. And the thought came to mind, I should post this on Facebook. <laughs> this would maybe get attention um, and say, don't get in the sun. You know, I'm Southern California, we went to the what beach. happens when you get too much. This is what happens when you're a sun worshiper and you put um, <laughs> baby oil on your skin to get a nice good tan. Oh gosh. Anyway, um, I did not do it. So I must have some vanity still. <laughs> I didn't do that. I did think about it, yeah. but I thought, yeah, no, I'm not ready for that. <laughs> but for the most part, I don't, you know, I, if somebody judges me or they say something that I'm disingenuous or not authentic or any of those things. It's like, oh, well, they it, don't really. It's me. beautiful how it can just roll off us. For the most part, me too. Like Jesus said, you know, he, well, he's the rock of all offense, right? It's, I mean, it right. was a scandalous gospel. The gospel itself is just, just, there's so much grace in it. It's unbelievable. 
that yeah. he would die for our sins and you know it gets me like teared up often and me too and me too just that even the offense um is gone like we don't have to be offended anymore there's no room for offense when we're filled with the holy spirit and i just love that because sometimes we tend to let in offense and as it's sort of like a natural tendency to just let it in and then you're absorbing it like a sponge and then you're starting to believe it as a lie and already you're you know before you know it you're you know judging yourself in a way so so i just think it's like that little door i i think it's beautiful that he gives us like the shoes of peace you know what i mean like the I'm talking like allegorically here, but just that, you know, with the armor of God, that those shoes of peace, I was thinking about that the other day because of the Super Bowl commercial, I think it was the, where um, he gets us and it was all over millions of people got to see that commercial because it was on the Super Bowl. And there was yeah. a lot of controversy about it because like some people were saying, oh, it's woke theology or, oh, it's this, you know, people had all these judgments to say, but what I saw was, you know, washing feet. Like that's a, that's a very Jesus centered message. I didn't see yeah. woke theology or I just didn't see that. And, you know, you know, maybe I missed that, but I didn't see it as a bad thing to expose people to um, how Jesus washed the feet and how he gets us. You know, right. Because exactly. all this other message is going into their heads, like drink beer, do this, do that. Why not have a good message going? You know, we get enough yeah. of the negative. <laughs> I think people see what they see and sometimes they don't get it for whatever reason. But yeah, no, I think those things are beautiful. I've seen I didn't watch the Super Bowl um, and I usually Google the commercials. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's that's a big commercial what... about Jesus, about say about. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I saw one, was it last year, there was one also, and I really liked it. I thought, oh, isn't that beautiful? You know, so I, I mean, I think it's, it's a wonderful thing to do. And everybody, <laughs> when you said to be unoffendable, mm. or that we should be unoffendable, I tell myself that all the time. And I think I've just kind of worked it out of my life, because, I mean, almost too much. <laughs> my daughter says, Mom, I don't think you you get ruffled about anything. Mm -hmm. And bad things can happen and they have, but you have to figure out how to survive that. And th those things are like when we're the diamond in the rough or, mm -hmm. you know, God is really molding us into that vessel that we need to be. Mm -hmm. He's the potter, right? And and sometimes life it spins us around, but he's the potter. Mm -hmm. And um, that it's a beautiful thing to see how things change. But I was pretty offendable mm -hmm. and offended when I was younger because a lot of things would kind of get on my nerves and I was always bumping into that stuff. Um, but not so much today. It's pretty hard to get me going. <laughs> That's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. And your yeah, witness is contagious too. The joy is joy is contagious. The it is the Lord is our strength, and you're projecting that, I'm sure, with your clients and just thanks. The good thing that you're doing. That's beautiful. Uh, yes, thank you. I do think that I offer a, a different mixture of um of help than what is normal. Yeah, uh, for sure. Hmm. Yeah. And so I think that. In fact, it's funny, I've been going through an organization called Brand Builders, yeah. and they help people really dial in their businesses, and they start with determining your brand DNA. Mm -hmm. And so that was a two-day workshop that I went to just recently, and so we were trying to figure out, they always want you to know what your uniqueness is. Mm -hmm. And so compassionate came up because I truly am very compassionate for people's stories. Um, and I'm nurturing to help them really get it out well, you know, so sometimes you have to work with people because they're going through a thing, especially like a book like Never Settle, where she's like reliving this um, time in her life that was hard, you know, but beautiful, you know, God kept coming through in all of the places. And it's, it's a beautiful 
um, tribute to her husband, but also to God and how her husband just would never settle wow. until he passed away. And then he decided that he would, um, he needed to go to heaven. <laughs> I mean, his body just pooped out on him. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and Lori, I'm going to ask you for the name of that book again, because I found a pen. For Settle? Uh, oh, not yeah. For Settle, Settle. No, the other one by you is um, oh. creating something. Create, else. yeah, create butterfly moments, become the person you were meant to be. Okay. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, it's funny because the whole time I was writing it, I would think of how I wanted to do it because I wanted to have scripture verses in every chapter and I <laughs> every chapter has um what I call ACTs so it's to encourage the person to take action all that so it's kind of like that and every chapter I, I would go okay so I could use this verse and this chapter and that verse and this chapter and and I I feel like God was up there going, no, mm -hmm. no, no. And I was like, but why? And what's funny about that book is, or any book, is it is a snapshot of what you were going through at the time. If I was going to rewrite that book, it would be a different book because I've changed so much since then. So that makes sense. Yeah. But the one thing that's true yeah. is, you know, this quest I had and I didn't write all of the chapters in order because it's a topical type book and so sometimes I would write a particular chapter and you know and I'd be okay I could get this verse in this chapter and I could see God up there going no <laughs> and so finally towards the end there's a principle that John Maxwell teaches called who luck it's called who luck and so when you're in a business setting, you might say, who do you know that I should know? And um, and that's a good thing to ask to get more business, to meet more people for a lot of good reason. So my chapter on who, look, who luck is actually, I know somebody that you need to know. And that was like when God finally said I could share my faith. <laughs> I was like, yay, we have who luck. <laughs> so I can share with you. And so the last that that's the third to the last chapter. Okay. Oh, interesting. And then the next one is some of God's promises. And my editor, my publisher and editor, I wanted that one to be very robust with all of these beautiful promises that we have. And they kept cutting them out. And I was like, uh, taught me another lesson is don't work with people that don't share your values and um, your your um, convictions but it is what it is and then the last chapter is what is your legacy going to be you know how are you going to create a legacy in your life so at the very end I could I could share what I wanted to do so it was a struggle along the way sounds like a little wrestling there with God <laughs> there was some wrestling that was like are you sure it would be so right here this yeah first, perfect I can, but, really, I can relate to that I'm working on a book right now it's sort, of, sort of well it's a mess because I just take my journal notes that I took over the years where I was having nice. encounters um yeah. Jesus and um just sort of morphing it into chapter book um about my life and I know the title the working title is going to be trusting the process from nice. identity crisis to identity in Christ nice I, I like that's, that that's the title and I'm just having trouble right now with the transitions like I feel like boy this this is really good but it needs a good transition to the next but then yeah. some people are saying, oh, it's fine how it is, but I don't know. So I'm sort of wrestling with some of that as well. I think that's what you do when you're an author is you yeah. try to look at it from different sides to see if it will serve the reader. Um, and it, it's it's hard to sometimes figure that out. I'm working with a guy right now. He's writing a book about um, the the wisdom that his dad shared with him throughout his life he has cerebral palsy and his dad passed away last year and he wanted to write a book that 
kind of speaks to the grief, speaks to um, what it's what kind of honoring his dad because his dad always his parents both always told him you can do anything. You know they didn't want him to have a disabled mindset, mm -hmm. and so they worked with him to do things and to try things. And mm -hmm. he's an incredible human being. I really just love him. I'm so grateful to be a part of his book. But um, he's he's I when I read the whole thing, I made little. This is how I work. I make little notes um, on the manuscript to make suggestions. As here, I think you need to expand, especially on whatever and here I think actually would serve you better in this chapter <laughs> you know I kind of try to get it flowing better and so we were talking earlier today and um, we were talking about how it would tie together and so I think we've got a good plan with it now but um, it's really special to work with people and help them make transitions from one place to another or flow, you know, kind of get a through line somehow, um, no matter how you craft it. It's it's a lot of fun for me. And I think the only reason I have any sort of intuition there, besides I do believe that God tells me these things to, oh, right here, do this. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And it always seems to work well. Um, but I've read a lot of self-help books. I wrote, I've read all of John's. He's, I don't know, written like 200 books, I think. And I used to read his books and apply them at work. And then things would go better and I'd get a promotion and he'd write another book and I'd get another promotion and I'd teach my people. And when I retired from Department of Corrections, I, I oversaw 600 people that worked for me in my areas. So that was kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but I attribute a lot of, because I read a lot mm -hmm. to help me grow as a person. Yeah. Um, I I think I'm good at helping people because I did that. Yeah. Through all that reading and hard work pays off for sure. I <laughs> think so. I love studying. Like I, I just can't stop. <laughs> I'm always, um, like, you know, joining a course or a class on something. <laughs> Right you now, I'm diving into yeah. Greek. I, I'm studying Greek, <laughs> just oh, well, biblical, biblical Greek. Not like yeah. not being able to speak it, but just understanding the words and um, yes. senses. Just I love that. I find it really interesting to look at the Bible through that lens. Um, I just didn't know for many years until the last couple of years um, about the finished work of Christ. I, I always thought like we had to like do something ourselves to make it happen and put me in just a bad place of real striving and self-effort. Um, yeah. The Lord showed me these Bible verses that, like you said, were just like pop out, you know, you reread it and, and yeah. when you're older, when you're older and, and things pop out that you didn't see before. And I, I know um, I'm studying like with this, uh, the mirror Bible, it's, it's, it's a paraphrase. It's not a, yeah. but it's a paraphrase of, and it's the Greek, the original. Nice. So I'm, I'm like, so interested in that right now. <laughs> and next yes. year it'll be something else, but I, I just love studying. Right. So I have a really good friend. He's, um, he's from Greece and is Christian um, later in life, a born in born again Christian and he's writing the Bible in Greek oh yes oh, yeah. so he, he he I don't what's his name? Like, what is his name is um Pete and I don't even know if I can tell you his last name right now oh, you have to me. I'll look it up and see yeah well it, when his Bible is done you'll see it I'll be promoting yeah. it for sure he Fran and his wife are lovely. Francois Dutoy and Lydia, I met them in person. The, the Did you? Wrote, yeah, they're the sweetest people. And, um, you know, you just feel the spirit when you're with them. You just can, they just radiate oh, peace and love. And I love that. Oh, just so, so much inspiration too, because they've just been through so much and the Lord has taken them through this path and writing this Bible must have took for a long time. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, Sometimes life work. It's really heavy. There's a lot to it, but you can um, 
you can get through it. It just takes, it takes some time. Um, it's hard because these yeah. days, like there's so many distractions where like even four years ago, it would be easier to read. But now like with technology and all the phone stuff, it's, there's a lot yeah. to distract the kids. And I'm worried about the kids. Cause like, oh, I'm also a literacy specialist. So I work with kids that need help with the reading and such. And some of these kids are like starting to do that chat GPT and just, um, and, and, uh, artificial intelligence can just type a paper for you so like, oh yeah you know what is what is this world going to be like in 10 years you know people going to be it's, like you know use that as a crutch i don't know it's so scary sad. yeah it's, what was the name of that book again this is the mirror Bi mirror bible this one's the study bible yeah the mirror word nice mm -hmm. i was just Oh, Pete about it. So Pete and Stacy, they're lovely, um, but <laughs> something unusual. Um, so they always wanted to have kids and they're both in their early fifties. And last summer she got pregnant. And so they just had their very first baby. <laughs> what? Yes. Wait, how old is she? 53. 53? 53. That's and he a is Sarah and Abraham moment. I know, right? He is so. I was with him a couple of weeks ago, and their little baby is Joshua, and he is so adorable. I just love him. And Pete is very Greek. I mean, he lived in Greece most of his upbringing. So, um, if you meet his mom, you could go, "Oh yeah, they're Greek." <laughs> She's yeah. really fun, but very Greekish. Yeah, and. And Stacy was born and raised in San Diego. And so they're such, they're, they love the Lord. They just are so, I mean, I just adore them. Mm. And um, so Pete's Bible should be done pretty, pretty soon. He's been working on it faithfully for quite some time, but with the baby, it's a little wonky in their world. Wow. <laughs> yeah, definitely imagine. share that with me on the messenger, the name. I will. I will. Yeah, as That's soon as... I love yeah. William Paul Young. I was going to recommend the book Crossroads for you. If you haven't read Crossroads yet, uh, you mentioned the cerebral palsy. This author, William Paul Young, he's the he's the bestseller of the book The Shack. He wrote. Oh yeah, yeah. He that was the number one best Christian book ever, or something. And, and yeah, and it was beautiful. But um, yeah, that really rocked up the religious people, right? <laughs> um, yeah. But he wrote another book after that. He's written more books. And the one about Crossroads is about um, a young boy that that has um, downs. It's not cerebral. It's a little bit different. Um, but the character development and the relationships between the family are just was so well crafted. Um, I love that. And it is based on a true person in his life that he got permission to use that person um, who sadly passed away. Um, mm tragically by just running around running in the middle of the road and just got hit by a car like it was just, oh. so he yeah he's he he's had a lot <laughs> in his life that you know yeah. tragedies and things like that um, um well it definitely crossroads is a good description of you know having those kinds of things happen in your life it does yeah kind of I always say that it either makes you better or bitter mm. and you make the choice, you know, I mean, you can, you can go either way. Yeah. Uh, it's so much better to be better, not bitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Well, he does, well, fill, I, fill, our cup. He does yeah. fill our cup, right? He fills us with the overflowing. Yeah. He but, sure um, does. I wanted to share one thing that um, Franz, yeah. uh, Francois, what William Paul Young said, he said this the other day in a Zoom chat. He said, I don't, I don't want to know what you know. I want to know what you hear. And I was like, wow, that really resonated because it, he, in the context of the conversation, it was about um, a, re a religious person was, was sort of judging someone who was in a sin. Um, and then, and then he was like, called out to like it was about a dream he had to like stand up and and support this person who was being judged for their sin yeah. because because as soon as you're pointing the finger at someone else 
you're you're playing God. You're not right. letting yeah. God do what God does. Okay. So, yeah, so but true. I want to know what you know. I want to know what you hear. Yeah, I like that. I like that because you know that is true. Um, you might interfere in what God is trying to do for that person. Yeah. If you are causing, you know, strife and judgment and all of that, and I I do not agree with that at all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty good at. I that is one thing that I would say that when I was younger, I probably would have been one of those people that judged more. And um, I just, I don't have any of that in me anymore. I just really don't. I believe that everybody has a path and their path may be different than mine or somebody else, but you know, it's still worthy. Mm -hmm. It's still worthy to love that person because God loves them. And he didn't tell us to judge first and then love somebody. Mm -hmm. He told <laughs> He told us to love one another, you know, and he didn't say just love your brothers and sisters in Christ. <laughs> he didn't say it like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's important to share that love with everyone. So, yeah, I know it's time to go. It's we got to have a big day tomorrow. I definitely will be praying for your it's your husband's knee or mm -hmm. your, he's having surgery tomorrow. No, no, no. That was yesterday. Oh, that was. Oh, how is he doing then? He's doing great. Like it wasn't as bad as we thought. They didn't have to drill in the bone. It was just a meniscus tear. So he's doing pretty good. He doesn't need crutches. So. Wow, that's incredible. Uh, it was. It was. It was God. It's all God. <laughs> That is God. That's a beautiful. The surgeon, thing. the surgeon was amazing. Like he was just the sweetest guy, and we were really. Oh blessed to get him as as his surgeon um he's like that's supposedly cute. one of the best so oh that's what, what area do you live in we're in connecticut connecticut um so like boston new york the area i'm gonna be flying to niagara falls oh. in may okay. um on the canada side i'm speaking at an event there oh and nice. very excited about that yeah pretty cool well, I was just going to share this one book and maybe I'll send you the link because I think that you would like a lot of these author, all of these authors are uh -huh. uh, Malcolm Smith. Do you know Malcolm Smith? I know the name. Yeah, he's, he's one of the big leaders in the grace. Uh, Don Keithley, Francois de Troyes, the one that wrote the Mira, um, Steve McVeigh. There's my friend, my friend Lisa wrote a chapter in it. There she is. <laughs> that sounds wonderful yeah so yeah just i don't know if it speaks to you <laughs> I, yeah. I found some of them were very um they're very different like it's not every story is quite unique <laughs> at first i was like oh i don't know about this the abundance of grace of giving i don't want to read about giving you know <laughs> but as, <laughs> then i started and i'm like this is really good i'm gonna share this <laughs> I love that. Oh, that's good. I'm sure that they all appreciate it too. Yeah. Well, right. thank you so thank much you. for what a great time to talk. And um, it's so nice to meet you finally. And I'm so glad that your husband's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I saw that I thought it was tomorrow. I, I you know me, I'm oh, kind yeah. of probably in order. I'm running full, full steam ahead most of the time. It's hard for me to stop sometimes. <laughs> but um, I'm on a mission. Yes. Um, Anyway, All God right. bless you. Well, and so much. I'm really interested too, and in, you know, talking to you about your book publishing. One oh, step to the next step. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course. Well. Yeah. If you need help, call me anytime. And um, thank you for just the wonderful conversation. Yeah. All right. Have a good night. You too. God bless. God bless you. Bye.